All right, Jay, so this is it. Looks beautiful. Very, very happy with it. You did a great job. Haven't smoothed anything yet. I figure, uh, you know, before I spend too much time doing that and maybe crashing it on the Maiden. But uh, this is the setup inside. Here's a 2200 Forest battery. I've got the canard servo here. I've got the tubes here, the carbon fiber tubes with the rod, metal rod going through it. It's a weaker rod, not the heavy duty, because I, I thought I had it, but I didn't. And the one thing I have to be careful of, which you'll find out, probably everybody finds out, is when you land, these catch the grass. So I'm going to come, uh, come in on a landing on a belly flop with the canards. And that's something Dan makes fun of me for, but that's why I do it, is because the canard planes that I've been flying, you have to belly flop them. So I've got the uh, Lynx connections on the th um, thrust vectoring vanes and on the uh, elevons. I've got full throws on the thrust vectoring vanes and medium throws on the elevons. And then finally I've got the um, uh, canards on a switch. That's all the action I'm giving them. Very little. One thing I learned on the MiG 1.44 that I just made with the 3D nose, when the canards are up higher than the main wing, you do not need that big angle like you do on the uh, Profile 144 where they're down here and you need that deflection to get the airflow over the wing. This should work, work fine. So uh, anyway, there it is. That's all I got. I've got that on a switch so when I'm flying I can turn it off and then I just activate a little bit there in high alpha or whatever. Oh, and where is it? Ah, air brakes. I'm trying those kind of air brakes rather than the flipping down because flipping down when you come in for a landing, uh, they'll catch the grass for sure. So I'm going to try the air brakes out at some point. Maybe not today. Okay, so on the bottom, it's easy to hold your hand, hold the fuselage by the bottom for launch. And uh, full throttle, we'll see what happens. Wish me luck. Whoa! Oh! What happened? Oh! Something cut out. I'm gonna try it anyway. I don't know what's going on here. Something just cut out. As you saw. Let's give it a shot. Ah! Oh! What a disaster, Jay. It just cut out on me again. I uh, probably should have waited before trying to figure out what that problem was with electronics. But, uh, of course, I'm impatient. All right, Jay, take two. Um, back out at the field. It's a nice day, a little bit breezy, but uh, I don't care about the wind as long as uh, the plane is not going to cut out on me. Pretty maneuverable. There you can see I did that low level loop and then I have to really come out of it smooth to build up the airspeed or else it'll just drop like a rock. That's typical for all the EDFs I've had. And I hope you can see this because I noticed my camera's tilted a little bit. That's the drift I was talking about where the tail slides out a little bit. That's pretty good, Jay. But like I said, momen momentum is key. All right, it's windy, but let's see what we can do with high alpha. And without the rudder, I've got to over-exaggerate the, uh, the elevon movement. Uh, 
That's right into the wind. Build up speed. All right, I can hear the battery going. I don't know what kind of flight time we got out of that, but I was at uh, two thirds or 100% throttle the whole time. All right, a lot of fun, Jay.